Hey, how's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. I'm glad you dropped in. You know I love it when you drop in the shop, eh? So thanks a lot. Uh, my Husk Farnell lawn tractor is not working. I had a look at it and I'm going to show you what I found. Okay, so I was coming out to cut the grass say, and uh, this is what I found. As soon as I opened up the shed, I noticed under the tractor the wet floorboards. Uh, that's a sure sign that gas has been leaking. So then uh, I checked and uh, I opened up the hood here like it is and I checked now, right now I put some fuel in it but the tank was bone dry, right down, nothing, nothing in it. So I put uh, this much fuel in, a quarter of a tank and I tried to start it. So I just want you to hear the sound it makes when it tries to start. Okay, you saw when I was trying to start it, and eh, 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 yeah, she's hydrolocked. Uh, so I'm going to check the oil now, just to see what condition the oil's in. So you can see here. Well, it's hard to see, but she's filled to capacity. The oil is uh, very, very light and thin, and it certainly smells like gas. So that tells me that the gas that was in my tank drain through the carburetor, through the intake valve, into the cylinder, into the sump, and when all that was filled up, it just came back out through the carburetor and dripped onto the floor. So yeah, uh, I'm afraid it's hydrolocked. Somehow or other, the float is not stopping the fuel from filling up the bowl. So we have to take the carburetor off, find out what's wrong with that. There's probably just dirt in it or something. I hope that's what it is. But this is a fault that plagues probably a lot of small engines, especially that are gravity-fed fuel where you stop them but if the float doesn't close they just continue to empty. So we're going to start by uh, getting access to the carburetor here. So we'll take the air cleaner and air filter off and that's just new. Although that's interesting, look at that, the seal is busted there. Wow. I think I'm going to take the whole carburetor off because what I want to do is, is I want to see if I can find out exactly if the float in the carburetor is, is stuck. So I'm going to take this housing off and remove the carburetor completely and take it to the bench. So we move that up there. Now we have access to the curb. We'll, we'll drop the gasket. We'll disconnect this anti-backfire solenoid. Then I can disconnect the choke and I can disconnect the throttle. And now we're going to take the carburetor to the bench. So we're going to take the carburetor bowl off now, gently if I can. So that's the uh, backfire solenoid. It looks good. And then we're going to try and get the bowl off as easily as we can. There's a few little floaties in there. Not much though. Not bad. Uh, usually in the fall, I'll turn off the fuel and run the float bowl empty of fuel just to try to keep the carburetor a little cleaner. I didn't do that last fall, but I also use Stabil in my fuel all the time, and that makes a big, big difference. So, like, there's uh, a little bit of Debris in that bowl you can see, but not much really. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to take this little hinge pin out. And then lift the float out. With the needle valve. And I just want to remove the needle valve here and inspect that a little bit. If you can see that. Hard to see with my black gloves. It doesn't look too bad. I'll check that a little closer in a minute. Now I want to check down in here. This is the seat where that needle valve sits, down in here. So I'm going to uh, just clean that out. There's some other Q-tips here. So we'll wet that down too. See if we can get this in there. A little bit better success. Didn't see any dirt on it though. So we're going to clean the carburetor.
when you're cleaning the carburetor, you know, there's lots of little uh, sundry ports and passages for the fuel to pass through. Well, not lots, but there's some. So I like to go over the carb and just see if I can find and locate them all and spray some cleaner in them. I'm going to try and take the emulsion tube out of this now. And most times the emulsion tubes will thread in. But I can't see how this one threads in. So I'm wondering if it just pushes in. So I'm just going to try and put a screwdriver in here and force down on it. See if I can get it to come out. <clears throat> no. Okay, I see now up on the top here, I'll just show you this. That's the top part of the emulsion tube. It's It looks like it goes in through the bottom and it's pressed into the top. It's not meant to come out. So the emulsion tube is not serviceable on this carb. Isn't that interesting? That's what uh, new technology does for you, I guess, eh? Anyway, we're going to try and clean this emulsion tube as best we can. I don't know. I don't like that, but anyway, I guess that's what we have. That's what we have. So I am getting a little bit of dirt out of the bowl. So I'm glad I am because that's telling me that's probably that's what caused it to stay open and uh, not shut the fuel off and then flood out the engine. Okay, so I have this more or less uh, cleaned up a little bit, anyways. So we'll start putting it back together. I did examine this needle valve here, and uh, it looks pretty good. There's a little rubber seat on the end of it, rubber tip, and it looks in good shape. So anyway, this goes in here, like so, and then this drops over the emulsion tube with the needle valve going down into the uh, fuel inlet port. We put the pin back in, something like so. All right, I got that needle and seat back in place. We're going to check it. So blowing in this way with the float closed, it shouldn't. I shouldn't be able to blow into it, and I can't. And it holds a vacuum, so it's mounted in the tractor this way. So when the float bowl is empty, the float hangs down, and we can get fuel in. But then, as it fills up, it should shut off. Working good right now. Let's hope it does when we put it all back together. Okay, now the little O-ring that goes on there to seal around the bowl, I like to put a little Vaseline or some kind of uh, petroleum jelly on that. And I don't have any Vaseline, so I'm just going to use some of this uh, crazy grease. You just want to keep it uh, lubricated and moist and soft so that it seals good. Now if we can pick that up, we'll put that on here. But that one went on pretty good, so that's telling me that that's probably not the right way. But then the bowl goes on. Then we put our solenoid valve back in here, making sure that we have that little spacer washer on, in place in the bottom, and we do. And oftentimes uh, it's hard to get your wrench in here to tighten that up, but uh, I managed, I have a, a slim wrench here, so I was, I was lucky that way. All right, I'm going to turn the fuel on and see if we have a leak. Should have done that before I put all those covers in place, eh? So I don't see anything leaking there. One of the other things that happened because of this uh, float valve not closing, it flooded the engine and hydrolocked it. So I want to take the spark plug out, make sure the cylinder is empty, and I also have to change the oil, so we're going to do that next. Doesn't look too bad. It smells a little bit of gas on it. I'm just going to crank it over now and just see if any gas splashes out there. Can you keep an eye on that for me? It looks good and dry in there, so that's, that's good. I like that. So we'll put the plug back. And then after we get this plug in place, then we'll just change the oil and uh, we should be, go, be able to go mow the lawn. So to change the oil, we have to take this side cover off and uh, sometimes, yeah, you can just pull it out like that. Oh, there she goes. 
And this is one of these ones where you just twist and pull. There we go. And then the oil is supposed to drain out of that. Down into the pan. And we'll pull this to make it drain a little faster. I'm not going to change the oil, or I'm not going to change the filter because uh, the engine never really ran since I had this issue, so I don't expect I've circulated any oil into that. But I don't know if you can notice that, but the oil is uh, pretty liquidy. So I'm going to close this off again and remove my tube. I think this takes 600 mil. It's almost full there, so we'll add a little more. So I think it did take 600 mil. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right to the top of the checkered mark there that says full. So I just want to show you this oil. Oh, you can smell gas in it, eh? About 600 mil, I think I put in the tractor, and I don't show. I'm not sure how much this pan holds, but I'm thinking there's a whole lot more than 600 mil in there. But this is 10W30 oil. Now just watch as it drips off the the screwdriver here. Look. I think we got a little bit of gas mixed in with our oil here, folks. Okay, we're going to start it up and uh, check for leaks. Well, about six hours now since we finished this repair and I don't see any leaks coming from the carburetor and the oil's at a good level now, so I think we're, we're good to go. We can go cut some grass. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas of how you can prevent hydro locking, how you can prevent the fuel from running through if the float stays open like that. And uh, don't forget, thumbs up me. Hey, have a great week. We'll talk to you.